everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to can sugar-free apple butter. This apple butter is so delicious that no one's ever gonna believe it's actually really healthy for you. It has no added sugar whatsoever. I'm going to show you my super easy method to can it as well so you can enjoy it all winter long. Or maybe you wanna preserve it to give away as an extra special gift for family and friends. I can't wait for you to join me in the kitchen. Let's go. Before I get started here, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing with you some delicious and unique ways you can use apple butter more than just spreading on your toast that you're going to be blown away by. So stay tuned for that until the very end, everyone. I'm starting today's recipe right here at the stove with a very large bowl of homemade applesauce. Now, if you do not have homemade applesauce at home, do not fear. You can just use applesauce from the store. Make sure it is unsweetened, pure, unadulterated applesauce. So I'm going to take my applesauce. Here I have about 16 cups. We made this applesauce just the other day using Ontario apples, Paula Reds to be specific, and I just love the kind of pink tinge to this sauce. But anyway, it really doesn't matter what kind of apples you use to make your applesauce or whether it's store-bought, as I mentioned already. And here's the shocking part of this recipe, everyone. There are only three ingredients. So you're going to have your applesauce, which I'm putting here in a big roaster pan on my stovetop. If you don't have a big roaster pan, a pot will do as well. You can even do this in the crock pot if you want. So to this 16 cups of applesauce, I'm going to be adding four teaspoons of cinnamon. Now, if you are halving this recipe or making it a smaller batch, just remember one teaspoon of cinnamon per four cups of applesauce. And I'm also adding one teaspoon of ground cloves. Again, if you are making a smaller batch, just remember one quarter teaspoon of ground cloves per four cups of applesauce. The reason I like this recipe so much is because it starts with applesauce. A lot of apple butter recipes start with like whole apples that you've chopped up and water as well as apple cider and vinegar and a bunch of different things like that. And this recipe I love the most and it's the closest I've been able to find to Wellesley apple butter. If you are not from Canada or Ontario, more specifically, maybe you've never heard of Wellesley apple butter, but Wellesley apple butter is so, so delicious. It's made in Southern Ontario and there is no sugar whatsoever added. Of course, like any good Mennonite farmer, they will not give away their recipe. <laughs> So I've had to put around and try to find something that works and this is the closest I have found. So you're going to give the applesauce and spices a real good stir and you're going to heat this mixture on a very low heat for a long time. Low and slow is the key here. This is why I've mentioned that you could make this in your crock pot because you could put it in and set it on low for the day. I like to do it on my stove top because it means I can stir it frequently, I'm reminded it's there, and quite frankly, my crock pot is not near big enough for this batch. I've also made this in the oven, so you could make this in the oven if you'd like. But what you're going to be doing is cooking this down for about six hours or more until you get the proper consistency. You're gonna to wanna to make this recipe when you're going to be home all day or all evening so you have the time to do it. As it's cooking there low and slow, make sure that you are occasionally taking that lid off and stirring it so that you know it's not burning to the bottom of the pot. If you don't have a steam vent hole on the lid of your pot or pan, you would probably want to leave the lid askew a little bit to leave a vent for steam to come out. This is important in the thickening process. Once your six hours have passed, your mixture is going to look like this going to look like apple butter. Oh, that dark color just looks so good. I'm sure your whole house is smelling so good by this point. Now you know you're ready to can. I'm washing up half pint jars, which hold about one cup. And it's important to wash your jars and your rings very well. And I always use brand new snap lids for my jars. I do have an entire canning playlist. If you'd like to know more details on how to can yourself, please go ahead and watch that when you're done watching this video. So I fill my sterilized jars with an inch or so of water and I put them in the oven on 200 degrees Fahrenheit just to get them warm so that you're not going to risk cracking your glass by putting hot liquid into a cold jar. 
While those jars are warming, I'm going to be filling up my large stock pot that I use for a hot water bath can. Now it's not essential that you do a hot water bath when you're canning these, but I do tend to most of the time do a hot water bath because it really does ensure a good seal. And if I'm giving these away as gifts, perhaps to teachers or relatives, neighbors, bus drivers, I want to make sure that there's a good seal on those jars and I know I've done it properly. So I'm doing a hot water bath today. Put that pot on high to get that water to a gentle boil. And while that's happening, you can remove your jars from the oven, dump the water out and fill them each with your hot apple butter until it's within about one inch of headspace of the top of the jar. You can see here all the nifty tools I use for canning, like the funnel that fits perfectly on a mason jar, the magnet that grabs my snap lids and rings, which I have been sanitizing in a pot of hot water this whole time, tongs for grabbing my jars out of the hot water bath, and a non-metallic tool as well to get out any air bubbles before I put my lids on the jars. So you can see here, I'm just putting that non-metallic tool into the sides of the jars to get out any air bubbles. I have a link down below in my description box to all of these canning accessories I'm using. If you're interested in getting them for yourself. These are the tools I use all the time and I highly recommend them for you. So I'm basically doing the legwork for you to find those tools on Amazon and by you purchasing them through my link, it helps the channel out. So win-win. Next, I am firmly centering the snap lid on the top of my jar and screwing that ring on. My hot water in my pot has come to a gentle boil. So I'm going to place the jars in the rack that I have for canning. Now make sure that the pot of hot water is just a gentle boil, not a rapid crazy boil. Otherwise you could risk what's in your jars bubbling up and overflowing while they're in the canner. So just a gentle boil is all you need. Lower your jars into the canner, put the lid on and let them process for just 10 minutes. It doesn't take long. It's a very similar processing time to jam. After 10 minutes, remove those jars and put them in a cool dry place of your kitchen where nobody's going to touch them because you want them to seal properly and wait to hear that pop. After the lids have popped, letting you know they have sealed, you want to let them sit for at least 24 hours before you touch them. Don't put them in storage right away. Let them sit a while. And then before you put them in storage, which could be a fruit cellar, or it could be just a dark cupboard or a dark corner of your basement, wherever you're going to put them, check the tops of the snap lids by firmly pressing your finger down on the center of the snap lid. If the snap lid gives and goes up and down, you know it did not seal properly. No problem, just put that jar in your fridge and eat it within the next four to six weeks and you're good to go. If you press firmly down on the center of your snap lid and it does not give, you know it is properly sealed and can be stored for up to a year. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. I promised at the beginning of the video to share with you all some unique ways you can use apple butter besides just spreading it on your toast. Some of them, when I tried them for myself, it just blew my mind. So here's the ways you can use apple butter. Appetizers, one of the best appetizers I have had is French crostini, which has been kind of sliced and toasted, topped with apple butter and a slice of brie. And then you put this in your oven and melt it. It's an amazing appetizer for a family gathering, a social get together, a great fall and Christmas idea for appetizer that's unique. And on the topic of savory things you can have apple butter with, have you ever tried a chicken burger with apple butter on it? So basically whether you're having a breaded or unbreaded chicken burger on your bun, you're going to spread warm apple butter and caramelized onion with your chicken burger. It is so delicious. This is something that is gourmet restaurant quality that you can do at home and impress your whole family. My children also really like apple butter with their pancakes or waffles. So instead of maple syrup, this is a healthier alternative that maybe has a bit of a lower glycemic index factor. So delicious. Some other sweet tooth ideas are as a topping for ice cream. Who doesn't want an ice cream sundae topped with a bit of warm apple butter and sprinkled with nuts? Doesn't that sound delicious, everyone? Charcuterie boards are all the rage, it seems, right now, and I like to include a little crock of apple butter on that charcuterie board so people can put it on their cracker with a bit of aged cheddar and meat. It's so delicious. It's a wonderful addition to your board. 
And finally, maybe my very favorite is to have apple butter on warm homemade biscuits. This is a great idea for breakfast, but it's also good for a fall meal. If you're having an evening, maybe a soup meal where you're having butternut squash soup and you like to have some warm biscuits on the side, topping them with apple butter just gives it that mm, delish factor. I wanna take the time to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn more ways to live on less and are maybe interested in some more of my recipes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video for you to like it with a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that I'm doing an okay job and people like my content, so I really appreciate any thumbs up you can throw my way. Coming up, I will link that playlist all about canning and some more videos you might enjoy, so keep watching, y'all. For the least, this is Jen.